Hello community, the last days of summer, yes. And today we look at AI but from a different perspective. We look at actionable interactive artifacts here in our generative UI that we're gonna have a look at. Now, you know, imagine you ask your LLM a question and it's not answering in text or in voice, but it shows you here a perfect tool to explore the topic that you are interested in interactively, adaptive. So, if you just go crazy and you have unfiltered data from your AI, this is not helpful at all. This is just an overflow of data. So what you need, and last time we looked here at Geely and at Mercedes-Benz, they are now creating here their interactive worlds with the driver. And you remember, we talked about here from Geely AI Lab, learning here on the dialogue with the driver, with the user, and trying to guess here the belief system of the driver to have here the perfect communication. But imagine you are flying here, a beautiful old plane, and suddenly you have a malfunction, then you get a text right next to it, it says, hello, here's your friendly GPT-5 system. This is text only, and you have to read pages and pages. So no way that this is going to work. So now all the companies are working here on visual gadgets. And guess what? Also in medicine, if something happened, you want immediately the information from the eye that you see the organ, you see the complexity that you are dealing with, and this is the information you need. So, of course, you can have this also if you have a learning experience as a student. Like here, how can I learn piano? And yes, it's great. You can have a lot of text, you know, and explains it theoretically. Or you have here, an AI generates for you a gadget an interactive gadget, a practice tool. You just go there with your mouse or maybe you have a touch screen and you can immediately start. So you have a dedicated, task-specific, hopefully highly intelligent, generative user interface generated by your LLM. You don't get pages and pages of text anymore. Those times are gone. But how we do this? So generative interfaces is the topic here. So what we have to do? A new paradigm in which the LLMs proactively generate code adaptive interactive interfaces here with the human to better support your complex user goals. And let's say you have here a mathematical or your financial, no, you say, hey, three years of customer purchase data for an e-commerce database. And yeah, either you have here, yeah, GPT, I'm here to help you, please. Or you do not have to go to Lovable or whatever, you code your own app, but this is coded for you by an AI system. So the AI says, yeah, a generative user interface for your particular task. Here is it. I just coded this here. So here's your Dropbox. You just put your file in here. And given the content of your file, I will show you a visualization of the most important criteria that I found, the patterns that I found in your data. You don't have to code anything. You don't have to specify anything. I will show you the critical data that I analyzed looking at your real-time financial data, and I have to tell you, look, there's a problem, and maybe you have in the interface provide solution to this. So you see, you don't code anything. App, forget it. This is now all done here, generative user interface. So I move away from, if you want the LLMs here as a more conversational tool and element here, to LLM as on-the-fly creators of interactive experiences with the human. So from the user interface, it is quite a step, no? from a conventional here user interface that you have here with text into a generative user interface where the AI analyzes what user interface you need in your particular situation for your particular task, codes this gadget, and then shows you an interactive gadget that you can learn maybe much faster than anything in text. This is, of course, here a future of personalized educational tools by AI. It will adapt to your learning style or bespoke data analysis dashboards here if you have a clear task. And we are not going to talk. Of course, this is also the future for personalized professional tools that maybe you needed some, let's say, consultant if you are a small or medium enterprise here, because this can now be done here by AI and maybe even in a better way. Now, you can code whatever gadgets you want. No, you don't code it. You just tell the AI what, it, what you want, what you need for your task. 
and the user interface will be coded by the LLM or multi-agent system. So maybe you don't even know what is the best visual representation. And the AI will decide for you. Or you know exactly what you want, like this here. And you have exactly defined what are the singular dimension here on all these leaves, on all these sheets. So you have absolute freedom. You don't need to code anything. You don't have to anything, understand anything of coding. This is done by the AI. The AI generates its own user interface, its specific user interface to you. Yeah, maybe this is what you want to have. So here we have it now. Who invented this? Stanford University and August 26, 2025. Beautiful new paper. Generative interfaces. Finally, not an AI, not an LLM. But we have now intelligent interfaces to the humans here. Of course, by large language model, agent model, multi-agent model, and everything that you know, everything from graph rag and everything on knowledge graph integration. But you know what? We don't have to care as human about this anymore. And we have yet a beautiful GitHub and everything. So let's have a dive in. This is not a prompting trick. You are not sitting in your aeroplane and you have your head-up display and then you start to prompt engineer on your little GPT-5 window right next to your hut. This is now a real full-fledged framework here for an AI system, a multi-stage framework. And you have more or less three pillars, Stanford tells us, no? So you have a structured interface-specific representation that is decided upon by the AI. Then you have the generation of this interface here, the complete data generation pipeline, analysis pipeline, uh, coding pipeline and everything. And then you have, of course, you want to have the best interface. So you have a refinement. You have an AI guided iterative refinement process that you get, get the best interface at all. So, and we will talk about adaptive reward systems. And maybe you have seen in my actual post today, I showed you here that we have now adaptive reward systems from quantum machines. So we have now a quantum machine reward feedback loop, but not here. In this paper, we are we're going with a classical LLM. So here you have now the official uh, flow diagram by Stanford University. And I, I honestly, I tell you, this is just a coincidence that they also are interested here in quantum physics. No? And then what we will look at is the first step here, the structured interface specific representation. This is quite an interesting thing, especially if you go with finite state machines. Then AI will generate the code and the user interface. If you are familiar with everything from Cursor or with uh, Claude code or anything what's with coding and AI, you will say, hey, I know exactly what is happening. Then we will have an iterative refinement of our widgets. The AI will generate here quite maybe hundreds of widgets. Then we'll evaluate here with a reward function what are the best widgets here for this particular human job. And then we have with an adaptive reward function here a learning process. So the human user here, if I have here this question, I want to understand more about quantum field theoretical principles, then I get here the best interactive gadgets here where I can play around, where I don't have to read text, but I can intuitively learn more about it, given my particular level of knowledge and experience. So let's start a structured interface specific representation. You know, this is this where I told you, hey, this is a lot of fun with the finite state machines. So what they tell us here, the auto uh, Stanford now translate here the user queries, the human query into a structured interface specific representation that anchors and guides here the generation process for our widgets. So we have more or less two complementary levels. We have here the high level interaction flows that captures here the user trajectories and the task phases. And then we have here the operational low-level finite state machines that define here the component behavior, let's say for each interactive widget or whatever you have in your user interface logic. You can define this absolutely freely. Yeah? So first, interaction or the interactive flow. The high-level interaction flow provides here symbolic abstraction of the user behavior across primary interface stages. It represents here the user task progression as a directed graph structure. And you say, hey, again, graph, I know everything about graph and AI integration. And you see, it is so easy for the node to represent now the interfaces views. Or if you want a sub goal, so let's say you have, let's, th let's stick with this example of a financial thing. You upload your CSV file, then select your particular chart and have a drill down on the financial data of your company. And you get it. And the edges in the graph are, of course, here possible transitions, no? triggered here by the UI events itself. So simple human 
trajectory that we have here for the analysis. So the AI decide, hey, what is the best representation here? And then finite state machine to describe how the individual modules respond to the user action and update their state accordingly. And you know, hey, I know everything about state, yeah? So we model each UI component here as here a particular tuple. And you say, hey, I'm familiar with this. Yes, of course. It is the set of the triggered events. And delta is here the state transition function. And we have an initial state. And everything is, of course, here a partially observable Markov decision process. Now, the second phase is now the generation pipeline, code and everything. Yeah? How a query becomes now an executable user interface. Structured representation, generation, graph, code synthesis. I think you're familiar with this. Now, oh yeah, I notice here, orders keep you also a reusable code base here as a minimum set of fixed widgets, if you want, of common widgets. So let's say they have here for charts or for file picker or for simulators. So they have here a minimum set already of widgets that they can combine and have alterations and whatever. But you can design them themselves. So you have your common UI interfaces, clock, map, calculators, video player, code for your chart with a representation and everything that you can already prepare here as a widget form. And then, then comes the learning process. How does the system learn what I need or what a pilot needs or what a driver in a beautiful new car needs? Maybe it's a snowstorm. Maybe it's somewhere in the desert. So you have to train your AI system for all possible conditions. And we do this here with an adaptive reward function. And we go here with an iterative refinement methodology. So in the overall flowchart, you see we're here now at the iterative definement. And then we have here a particular reward function optimization. Great. So in our, let's call it an optimization loop, what is the task? We have now that the AI generates multiple candidate of user interfaces, 10, 20, 50. The AI and humans, I'll tell you more about this in a minute, evaluate them here with a very specific reward function and then regenerate the conditions here on the best candidate and critique model. And all of this is repeated until we have a convergence or you have an iteration limit, you say just five runs or you can hard code here your limitation. It's familiar turf. Adaptive reward function construction. This is nice. This is kind of a novelty if you want. Yeah? So an LLM, yeah, choose whatever you like, produces here a set of evaluation dimensions. So like the visual structure or explain the physics concepts if you are with driving dynamics or if you're in flight dynamics. What about the clarity of the presentation, the interactivity quality, if I tell you it's an interactive gadget. So you have an LLM, it has a lot of evaluation dimension. You can have new evaluation dimension added to this. You have weights, verification check, reward task aware instead of just some generic, generic heuristic. And they evaluate itself, as I told you, an LLM that reads here or notices here the rendered screenshot and the code, returning then, let's say, in an interval from 0 to 100, some scores per each metric indicator. And what's nice is that the paper shows that you have about 70% agreement what the LLM recommends on this 20 or 50 user interfaces to what the human think is also a good interface. So 70% agreement between LLM as a code and the human is okay. Adaptive reward function, iterative refinement, we talked about it. Here's an example. So you start here, if you want, here with one of the first iteration. You have here a basic dashboard here. Maybe you have here some summarization. Maybe you can choose something. Maybe you have here an indicator of the most important events happening. Then you optimize this. You have an onboarding page that explains here what it's doing. And then you have here, and this is done by the learning of the AI itself, no? The next iteration where you already see uh -huh, provides you all the important information for the particular task. So this is what we want. We want that the AI understands, builds and learns what are the best user interfaces for particular jobs. And then we have to evaluate it. No? User interface experience prompt suite, no? multidimensional metrics and everything. And you can have here. I don't know, 100 queries spanning here 10 different domains from web development, data visualization, education, business, advanced AI, machine learning, everything functional, 
dimension, interactive dimension, emotional dimension, evaluation methods, you have whatever you have, you can complement this with the human scoring, but let's look at the result. Hey, this looks good. The humans say, hey, this new idea here of a generative UI here in pink or violet or lila, look at this. Yeah, humans say, hey, this is good. 75%, 80%. 93% for particular task, humans say, hey, much better than the classical text. Because I have interactive widgets, I see immediately what is critical in my systems, what are the important financial data, what are, I don't know, in academic research, what are critical parameters here in my physical world model. So, nice. They are also used not only here yeah, I forgot to mention, they used your Claude 3.7 as the base model. And then they said, you know what? What if you not only go with Claude 3.7, if you go with GPT-4 Omni, and you see here for functional inter interactive and emotional parameters, yeah, if you go from 84%, where everybody says generative UI is great, you go here to 70%. But as you see, even here, 70%, 69%, prefer here the generative UI solution that was designed here by AI itself. Again, I want to understand quantum physics. Now, if you have here a static reward function that does not develop with you, you want to have a dynamic rewards function that you have interactive widget, you can play around, you understand this, you have an interactive system and not just a text system or a static system. More about the reward function, description, criteria, weight structures, everything is there. You have, if you want, just an example to give you what are adaptive reward functions here that we have. For example, does the UI expose the required metrics and the filters that are needed here for the particular job? Or can a user create here a new chart, a financial chart, within two or three clicks? Are all labels and all axes here, let's say you have a pie diagram or any other table, or any, everything readable is everything here, having a minimum size that everybody can read it, or all the filters that I can activate interactively responsive from the aesthetics even, hey, is there a hierarchy, is there an alignment, business strategy and operation, if you have the classical user query, hey, I'm a consultant working in, and then you get your ULLM and gives you four, five, ten pages of text, but imagine the AI would decide, hey, Given this particular question and given the particular data input, I create now this interactive widget that you can click here, 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 or you can drag it here, or you can play around it here, and the AI coded this for your specific needs. Conclusion, what is Stanford telling us? Hey, we are great. Now, we introduced generative interfaces here for the language model. This is a new paradigm in which LNMs proactively generate adaptive and interactive interfaces to better support your complex user goals. I already showed you something here from cards, from if you have here, if you're flying, if you're in medicine, if you have financial tasks, if you want to learn something new, you have multi-user environments and in the future they will also go for integrating multimodal input for video sequences from YouTube videos. My goodness, those user interfaces, they will really, really mean a step forward in the development here of AI and how humans use AI in the future. Very short video. I hope you enjoyed it. A little bit different topic, but so important. The human machine, man machine interface. If we optimize this for task specific complexity. Oh yeah. Subscribe and I see you in my next video.